Yo, what is going on guys? Johnny GB here with the Token Minorities, bringing you guys the first deck profile of the new year. I do apologize for my absence on the channel over the last couple of weeks. Visiting girlfriend, uh, death in the family, a lot of stuff been going on. Been kind of MIA from the TCG portion for the last two to three weeks or so but we are back we are bringing content we got big plans for 2019 here on the token minorities tcg channel brand new channel guys if you guys haven't already go ahead subscribe to the channel as well as like today's deck profile so today we are going to be going over zorark Bennett. so i am changing how i am doing my deck profiles from now on come february you guys will see more graphic editing brand new layout shout out to freeze for that uh, but you guys will see a new way in which I present the decks to you. It's not going to be, these are the cards I am playing. This is, uh, these are the three games I'm playing with the deck. It is more of a breakdown of how viable I think it is going to be in the format. And I'll give you guys a look at the top decks, uh, before we start doing the profiles so that we can give you guys an idea of what we're going to run through. Uh, we will also be going through tournament decks as well so a big change into the way I am going to be reviewing meta decks in the Pokemon trading card game whether expanded or standard if anybody wants to help me out with those feel free to let me know in the TTM discord server that link is down below that is so that I can get more experience from people who may play the formats a little bit better than I do uh, it just opens up and it's just positive TCG discussion for all of us. So, like I said, we are doing Zorark Vanette. So what does Zorark Vanette want to do? Well, if I can get into settings. Starting it off, Vanette GX was released in, I believe, not Lost Thunder, but Celestial Storm, I believe. I want to say. Don't quote me. I'm pretty sure it was Celestial Storm. Has the ability Shady Move. Shady Move. Works really good if you are playing something like Rainbow Energy. Rainbow Energy adds that 10 damage counter, or that 1 damage counter, onto your Vanette GX or whatever Pokemon that you put it on. And from there, you are able to use the ability Shadow Move. Shadow Move lets you move a damage counter from this Pokemon to one of your opponents. Which is just a good ability, gets 10 damage counters, maybe you pick up a cheeky KO with 10 damage counters, uh, you never know. But the attack Shadow Chant, it does 10 damage for each supporter card in your discard pile, you cannot add more than 100 damage, so you're doing 130 damage total. Why is 130 good? Well, you are able to KO Zorark after resistance, which is kinda nice, uh, having that uh, resistance does means it does 110 i believe so 110 220 also the 130 lets you get ko's on stuff like what is it garboder trying to think of the pokemon that are in that 130 range because 130 is the range that avoids being knocked out by zorark gx so Really good attack there, very easy. You're, you're pretty much going to use a supporter card every turn, so it's not that hard to get this attack actually start going and powered up. And then you have Tomb Hunt GX, put three cards from your discard pile into your hand, so this is very similar to Decidueye GX's GX attack, which lets you put three cards back into your hand. So your main goal is you want to get supporters into the discard so that you can start doing damage with your Bennett's. What are the ways you can get supporter cards into your discard pile? Well, Sophocles is one idea. Discard two cards from your hand, draw four. But there is the most common way you have Zorark. Trade ability, discard a card, draw two. Easiest way for you to get supporter cards into the discard pile in order to power up your Bennett. Now, Good complementary attacker in any psychic deck is Garboder. So Garboder is used for the Trash Lanch ability. This is pretty much the Pokemon you want to use late game cleaning. Uh, right when your opponent ha or right when you have one to two prizes left. In a long grinding game, Garboder is going to be very nice. Uh, because your opponent will probably play all four copies of their Ultra Ball, stuff like Field Blower, Rare Candies potentially. 
choice bands. So there is a good chance that your opponent is going to have a lot of item cards into the discard pile, which makes Garbodor the perfect cleaning Pokemon. Now, as for the support, uh, as for the trainers, lots of stuff that's interesting. Spell tag is one way that you can start getting more damage onto your opponent's Pokemon. So when a psychic type Pokemon is knocked out, put four damage counters onto your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. This is just such a great card if your Vinets are knocked out. It can also help Garbodor go in and clean up. If you have to, it can also help Zoroark pick off a couple Pokemon as well. Some other key cards I think in the deck that kind of get overlooked. Acerola is a great way to keep your Zoroarks or your Vinets alive. I feel like Acerola has become a little underrated now. Uh, that is just my thought. Nothing angers me more than playing a game in your opponent. Acerola is a Pokemon that you think, I am knocking this out next turn. And then bam, you kind of are in a back to square one mode. Especially when you're playing a deck like Decidueye, Zoroark, where most of your damage is coming spread style. It's just one of the cards that you do not want to see played on you. So, that's pretty much what the deck is trying to do. We want to get Zoroarks out fast, we want to get Binets out for the early game, and then we want to close it off with the Garboder. So, we're going to play a few games here, give you guys an idea of how the deck goes, and after those couple games, I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of what I think of the deck. Is it a deck that I really recommend in today's meta? Because right now, Buzzwool is still a predominant Pokemon. Uh, it's still a good Pokemon that you can have, that you're hitting for weakness. Uh, but looking forward towards Team Up. Team Up's only le 24 days from release. Pre releases are in like two weeks, a little less than two weeks. So, how will this deck translate over to the Team Up format? Because. There is a lot of stuff in Team Up that is going to switch around the meta. So, once that time comes, that's when I will be able to actually sit down and give you guys an idea of what the Team Up meta is going to look like because it's going to be brand new for us. Tag Team GXs are big. Uh, Waylord, Magikarp is seeing play. As what are we playing? Oranguru, Chansey. I have never seen a Chansey played in a Fomanta. So I can't give you much data on this game. Um, looks like a hodgepodge of Pokemon from my viewpoint right now. I've never seen this Chansey played. So he's probably playing a Blissey. I thought there was like a healing Blissey. Like, has an ability, it's like a hollow rare. Maybe, I can't remember. Alright, so, right off the bat, hand is decent. I like the idea of Great Balling right here. Oh, yeah, you know what? That, that works. So, Great Ball will get me a Trubbish, which I think is a pretty solid opening play. Uh, I played no items yet. I will attach a spell tag though. Spell tag just on any psychic Pokemon, in in my opinion, is honestly worse. So what I'm looking at here is do I Ultra Ball? I don't need Rescue Stretcher at the moment. Or do I just Lily? I think I'm just gonna Lily. Lily for four cards. Um and what I'm going to do is I'm going to Ultra Ball away the Field Blower and the Rescue Stretcher for a Zoroark GX. Because I do want to get my Zoroark GXs going as quickly as possible. And I am not going to attach an Energy this turn. I don't feel like it's necessary just in case he may evolve into a Lurantis. Then at that point, he could possibly knock out my Zorua and I lose a Double Colorless Energy. It's just one of those things going second. I just really hesitate in attaching an energy. Uh, doesn't look like he can attack. Oh, ooh, he probably could knock me out. He probably could knock me out with his GX attack. So if he attaches one more energy, he can knock me out with his GX attack, which is really unfortunate. 
But he's gonna get a choice band out. Interesting. Gets an Ultra Ball. This card's, what was that? Two Lurantis? Wow. He discarded two Lurantis. Up, oh, yep. So he might use his GX attack here. Let's see. Does he? Does he use his GX attack to get a knockout? Nope, he just goes for his flower supply. Okay, so I will get a Zora Arc on board safely, which is good. We get a second Zoru up. We get our Zora Arc. We're going to attach a double colorless energy, and then we're going to play a Cynthia, just so I can get a fresh hand. I don't want to use my trade right away. And here we go. We got some Binets. Um... What do I value more? I don't think I need Sightseer, so I'm gonna actually trade off Sightseer right now. And draw two cards. Gets me a Garboder, which I like because he's played one item. Not a, not a lot, but he's played one. We're gonna play another Trubbish down on the bench, and then we're gonna Great Ball. Uh, we are going to grab myself. Uh, I'm gonna grab myself a Binet. So a Binet gets me two Binet set up next turn. And right off the bat, we're going to go for the Righteous Beating to heal 120. And I have the Acerola in hand, so I can play a little bit of Acerola shenanigans. If need be, I can play Acerola shenanigans. What I would love to see is some sort of just garbage card I can just trade away with Zoroark. And actually looking at it, I could get two trades off. So he's going to Enhanced Hammer. Um, didn't know people still played Enhanced Hammer, but okay. Good to know. So he's going to go for a Cynthia, get brand new hand. way I'm looking at my next turn is... I have, what, three supporters in the discard? Oh, what did he just use? Blissey. I knew it was a healing Blissey. All right, so he has three energy. Chlorocythe GX, oh! He has a choice band, so that actually got a kill. Ouch. Ouch, all right, well, I'm gonna have to go into Garboder. <coughs> oh. Oh, that, that did not go as planned. So, we have our Binette. So with Binette's out, I feel a little bit more comfortable. The downside was I wasn't taking the choice band damage into account. The good thing is, is this Blissey's only when it's played onto the bench. If it wasn't, that'd be a little annoying to me. So how much can he do? 120, so he does not actually pick up a KO. Oh yes, he does. And heal 30, so he's only getting one more damage counter on it. Gosh, darn it. Maybe I should have kept the Sightseer and got rid of the Acerola. That's the downside. Is high si in hindsight, I'm starting to see the plays. Tate and Liza, now there's a card I haven't seen played in a while. I didn't. I thought Tate and Liza kind of just got stopped. I love it as a card, but I just haven't been able to see any. So he's going to super scoop up probably to pick up the Blissey. Oh my god goodness I see how annoying this deck is because Lorantis is just going to keep it healthy at all times <clears throat> oh my god that's going to actually be annoying oh wait you know what we're going to do we're going to start picking on these Fomantis so I got three more damage counters I could spread one two three four four is not enough I don't think all right. Well, we got a rainbow energy, if that helps for anything. Um, we're gonna shady move because I think I know what I can do here. I actually should have put it on this thing, right? Right? 
All right, well, we are going to Shadow Chant. I probably should have Shadow or Tomb Hunt GX uh, because I could get me a Zoroark and a Cynthia, which I could have used. Starting to really think about it. Oh my. If he keeps playing Enhanced Hammer, I actually lose the game because I play no regular energy. Yeah, and then there's Blissey, which is just going to pick stuff up. Oh my goodness, this is going to be really annoying for me. So there's the Rescue Stretcher. He's going to get one of his Lorantis back. Um, oh, this is... Well, on the bright side, it, I do have... I have Ace Roll up. The downside is... Uh, what can I move damage counters to? I don't have any draw supporters. This is where I really regretting not keeping Sightseer. I am really regretting not keeping Sightseer. And if I don't do anything this next turn, yep, I am just going to end up forfeiting that. Not the way I actually want to start the showcase of the deck. Really upset that that's the way it started. So I'm going to grab another game here. Um, I got off really slow. Well, I don't, I don't want to say I got off really slow. I played it really poorly with the Zora. Uh, me not taking Choice Ban into account really hurt me there. I mean, you guys feel free to let me know the misplays. Helps me learn and get better as a player when somebody points out uh, the exact misplays. I always appreciate those. That way I know what I can get better on. Uh, but... That's the way it goes sometimes. You lose you lose games that you just were never able to get going. Lost the coin flip. Alright, so let's see. Do we open up with a better hand? Not really. Not really, in, in hindsight. And we're going against a psychic deck, or a metal deck. So this is not helping us at all. Let's see rare candy. Please. I might run into the one Metagross or the one... Oh, this could be Solgaleo Dialga. If he's playing a rare candy, this could be Solgaleo Dialga. Uh, which I... I've been seeing a little bit of Dialga's attack lets you... Um, De-evolve. Oh, no, we're playing Beldum. Okay. So we're playing Metagross deck. Pokenav. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Add a Pokemon or energy, or reveal a Pokemon or energy, add it to your hand. And then reorganize the top two cards. Not bad, actually. So he gets himself another Beldum. He's going to Tate and Liza. Curious why that's starting to see play now. Last couple months, I haven't seen Tate and Liza as much. Alright, well, we do open up with the perfect card. We got Professor Elm's Lecture. Which lets us get the Nets and the Zoroarks out onto the bench, which is highly needed. Alright, well, one, I am going to attach the spell tag onto Trubbish just in case uh, I need to. And I am pretty much going to pass turn. Next turn, I'm looking at having two Zoroarks set up, ideally. Oh, he's playing. Yeah, he is playing the Diag Dialga. So the Dialga is the new one from Lost Thunder, or old one, if you guys want to look at it that way. And it's turn back time. A Metal Energy and Double Colorless. If your opponent has a Pokemon and it is an evolved Pokemon, devolve it by putting the highest stage evolution into your opponent's hand. So you're pretty much going from a Zoroark GX to a Zorua. So it is not a fun attack to really go against so there's the metagross gx he's probably going to go for the geo system gx right or the algorithm gx he's going to search out for five cards in his hand search for five cards put them into his hand which is just going to be annoying because one he has resistance against metal which is going to be very annoying 
It's going to take a lot of items in his discard for Garboder to actually do anything. So this is uh, going to be a grind of a game, really. So there is the double colorless energy which might help me, I am not really sure of. I do have the Binet out though, and we are going to one, blow away that choice ban. I do not want choice bans. Uh, we're going to get myself a Garboder out. I guess I'll attach and then I will Cynthia get myself a fresh hand. Mysterious treasure, Lele. Get myself another Shuppet so I have another Binet going. I'm going to trade Mysterious Treasure just because I don't have a need for it right now. Alright, well this isn't helping me. Alright, so he does need two energy attachments, which is nice. He's going to go for another rare candy, which I am okay with. Because uh, that's what, four items now in the discard pile? Problem is, is he has three Metagross out, which is not going to be a fun time at all. Uh, he will play the judge, so we will have a smaller hand. Uh, I'm not very fond of the hand I have right now, so in hindsight it could be a good thing. Uh, Sophocles, not a bad thing. Enhanced Hammer. Everybody is playing Hammers. I'm starting to debate if I should play Hammers in this deck. Alright, so since I really want to start using Binet, I could probably start discarding some supporters. Uh, Sophocles will be one of those uh, because I have the Cynthia in hand. Uh, we're going to play the Lele, and I'm going to Lele for a Guzma. So the main reason I do want the Guzma is so that I can bring in the Dialga. I want to get rid of the Dialga as soon as humanly possible. Alright, we're going to play Rainbow Energy. We're going to use the ability Shady Move. We're going to put a damage counter onto that Dialga. I mean, it's not really going to matter. Oh, wait, no. I was thinking Solgaleo. Solgaleo Ultra Road is the one that lets you switch. Uh, we're going to Shadow Chant. I know it's going to have resistance, but it is some form type of damage onto uh, the Dialga. There's the Metal Energy, and that will pick up a Knockout. Because turn back time does 60 damage and Bennett has 60 HP. Oh my god, Enhanced Hammer is going to be the death of me. What's actually good though is he's playing all these items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Keep playing these items. Keep playing these items. That is all I want. Nine, oh, is that nine items, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items in the discard. Yeah, but see, now that he has 60 HP, he's going to pick up a KO here and get a free knockout, pretty much. Which is a little unfortunate, but you know what? That's the way it, that's the way it crumbles sometimes. We're going to get another Binet into play. Um, we are going to trade away... We're gonna trade away a Sorola, I believe, because I need I need as many draw supporters as I can possibly get. Hmm. We're going to Cynthia. Cynthia is my best play here, and hopefully land a double colorless energy. I do not, but I do get a Zora Arc, which gives me another potential for one. Uh, Ultra Ball, I'm not seeing a being of use. Lily, at this point in the game, isn't really helpful now. I got two Zoroark out. Oh, Rescue Stretcher. Uh, we got a Choice Band, so I'll probably put it on one of these on the bench. Uh, the way I'm looking at it, I can actually Ultra Ball, get rid of the Shuppet and the Elm's Lecture. At this point now, grab me a third Zoroark. The problem is this goddamn turn back time is going to pick up another knockout next turn, so... Ugh. I really, really hate Dialga.
I just really hate it because a lot of your basic Pokemon are 60 HP. Your Zorua, Benet, um, stuff like Beldum, Charmander, Dratini. A lot of those stage 2 Pokemon are revolved around 60 HP basics. And a metal and a double colorless energy isn't hard now, so he's gonna go for the Acerola, which I actually like. Uh, that actually saves my Zoroark. Does it? No, I. No, Zoroark dies here, right? Oh, Giga Hammer. Okay. So there's 130 HP, but how many items? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10. He has 10 items in that discard. Nope, never mind. He geotech system. Oh my god. <sighs> well, one, he has 10 items. At this point, uh, choice ban, I'm not really gonna need. He has 10 items. I'm picking up a knockout on the Dialga. If I get a rainbow. Yep, there's the rainbow. Great ball, nothing. All right, so one, we are going to shuffle in three Pokemon from my deck. So the way I, I, I'm pretty much just going to try to win the game with Garbodor at this point. Uh, we're going to get rid of Zoroark. That is just so I can draw cards. Yep, Cynthia, we're gonna get myself another Trubbish and we're going to win the game with Garbodor. That, that is finite. Final Trash Lance knockout. Resistance did 180 damage. That is because he is playing items left and right. So here comes his Metagross. He needs three energy to get going. He has three Metagross, and I'm pretty sure he has plenty of energy. So there's the Dialga again. He's going to play that down on the bench. I should not have discarded that Guzma. Oh, I still have the Guzma. Okay, good. So hopefully I can actually get the Guzma so I can bring in the um, Dialga again. So if I can just sit there and knock out the Dialga. Oh, wait, no. He just gets a knockout here. Because I did not think. I forgot. Uh, Metagross does 150. Oh, my God. I really am struggling. This is what happens when you don't play for three weeks. You really get a lose in how to play the game. So hopefully I can get back into a rhythm here with this deck. Because I was actually liking Zoroark Manette uh, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. I thought it was a good deck uh, for me, my way I wanted to play. So he will pick up a knockout here. Which is unfortunate. We are going to put some damage counters here. Where do we want to put the damage counters? I think we're going to want to put him on Dialga. <laughs> Alright, so really my game is revolving here on me getting a Guzma. So there's a Binette. I, I mean, this is just really dependent on me getting a Guzma. Oh, there it is. So let's get the Dialga forward. Let us get this Zoroark forward. Because I'm just going to use Zoroark as an attacker. I'm going to save this uh, Rainbow Energy for another Trubbish. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 items in the discard. We're going to go for the Righteous Beating. We're going to get a pretty good amount of... Or we're going to get a knockout of the Dialga. Do I still have Choice Bands? I should play two Choice Bands in the deck. So I should still have one Choice Band. I would love for him to play another item in all honesty. Like an Ultra Ball or something to search out. That would be my ideal scenario right now. <laughs> OK. 
Because let's see, what can I do next turn? How many rainbow energy are in my discard pile? Two. I have one here. So one, I will Acerola. So that should give me plenty of uh, support in my discard pile, right? Oh yeah, I have plenty of supporters in my discard pile. So we're good to go there. We're going to attach a rainbow energy. We're going to shady move. We're going to move in. We're going to move one onto here because he can't attack next turn. So that is a good positive for me. Uh, we're going to shadow chant. It's going to do 110 on the resistance. Ouch, that's not what I want, right? Yeah, he's just gonna withdraw. Then he's just gonna geotech system. The same thing Metagross did little or almost a year ago, right? No, that was almost, geez, almost two years ago. Ugh. Yeah, this is gonna be a loss. Because he's just going to get a knockout here, and then he can just get a knockout on a GX after that. Oh my god, I'm so frustrated. I hate Metagross. Especially when I'm playing a Psychic deck, I really hate Metagross. Alright. Well, I gotta figure out something to do here. Because it is not looking pretty right now. Uh, we're just gonna have to shadow chant. Oh, um, I'm trying to look at possibilities the way I went here. Because he can just get free retreat. He's just gonna wonder tag probably for a Guzma. Which will be game, right? Yep, there's the Guzma. He's going to pick on the Trubbish. Yeah, that's game. Oh my god, I am frustrated with this deck. And I don't know. Do I want to give an honest review of what I think and what it would do in the meta? I mean, there's the item I needed. Yep, there's the two items I needed, so I should have just held off on the Trubbish. Oh yeah, look at all those items that are in hand. Or, look at those, all those items now. Just knock out, knock out, knock out. Oh my god! And that will be a loss. So, what we're gonna do here is, we'll probably just go out to Banette. I don't have another Guzma. So, nothing I really can do here. We are just going to forfeit. We're going to take the loss, and we are going to have a little discussion of strengths, weaknesses, do I recommend. So, looking at Zoroark Banette, it's great when you are playing Buzzwool. Buzzwool, this deck does really well against because you are being able to pick up one hit knockouts on either Baby Buzzwool or Buzzwool GX. Banet does a very good job of that, but when you look at the rest of the meta, um, Zoroarks are running around, so the weakness to Dark, you are being one hit KO'd by Zoroarks, you look at popular resistances, Zoroark is having a resistance to uh, metal Pokemon like Scizor, Solgaleo, Metagross, Dialga, they all have a resistance to Garboder and Banette. It isn't a deck uh, I see being great going forward. Initially, uh, it was a very powerful deck back when Celestial Storm came out in August. But now when you look at the power creep and what is upcoming into the team-up format, I don't see this deck as being very viable unless uh, you see some potential changes uh, in the meta you get some heavy fighting weakness but when you look at it you have in Japan I believe it's Night Raid Unison 
that has the Zorark Greninja tag team. Uh, you have Melmetal GX coming out, which is going to be nice and fat. There's also, I believe, I believe there's going to be a tag team for every typing in the Pokemon TCG game. So you're going to get a metal type. Uh, Greninja Zorark tag team is the dark type. So you're going to see more dark types and Cinderor is going to start seeing play. So there's another Pokemon to add to the resistance against Psychic. Um, I just don't see this deck being as viable as it once was. Not here to say it is a bad deck. I'm not seeing the viability in it going long term into the team up format because that is going to be a pretty big format. If I were to rate the deck out of 1 to 10, uh, 1 being this deck is just awful. Do not play it in this format. To 10, this is the best deck. You're going to see this at every regional uh, in the top 8, top 16, top 32. Um, I'm going to say this deck's probably around a 4 on that scale. I just don't see the viability in the deck going forward long term. Lots of dark type Pokemon being added. You also have the new Black Market Prism Star, so dark types are getting a lot of support. Along with metal types come May, they will be getting more support as well. Just not a good time to be a psychic Pokemon right now. Seeing as the only thing you're really doing anything against is Buzzwolf. Uh, so that is my review here of the Zorark Bennett GX standard profile. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the TTM TCG channel, guys. If you guys have not already done so, let me know any decks that you guys want me to use down below. I do have a list of decks that I will be recording through January. But anything in the team up format that you guys want me to experiment, let me know because I have big changes in store for you guys here on the TTM TCG channel. With all that being said, guys, I am Johnny GB with the Token Minorities, and I am signing out.